Good morning, teacher, and good morning, everyone. My name is P, and I am from Group Three, which consists of me and six other members, including Mandat, Arundhat, Satisat, Monthong, Nita, and Rajana. And today, our group will explore the topic of tourism and why is tourism become a global phenomenon. In this topic, we have divided into five parts. The first one being introduction, the second one domestic tourism, and the third one we talk about evolution of mass tourism into niche tourism. The fourth one, what influences global tourism trends and the last but not least why is tourism subject to regional fluctuations so now let's moving on to the first part which talk about introduction and here we will take a look at an overview so since the end of world war ii world's populations have rapidly grown into 7.9 billion people as in 2021 this growth has sparked the interest of traveling and therefore unexplored tourist attractions become more popular. Between 2000 and 2018, the number of tourist arrivals in Cambodia have increased about 13 times and they mostly visited historically significant sites such as Angkor Wat or Brevi Temple. Now we will talk briefly about why Angkor Wat is such a popular place to visit among the tourists. Situated in northwest of the capital of Phnom Penh, is one of the largest provinces in Cambodia, Siem Reap. Angkor Wat is one of the biggest Buddhist temple complexes. It was originally built in the first half of the 12th century as a Hindu temple. And covered up the landmass of more than 400 acres, Angkor Wat is said to be the largest religious monument in the world. Its name, which translates to Temple City in the Khmer language of the region, references the fact that it was built by the Emperor Surya Vataman II, who ruled the region from 1113 to 1150 as a state and political center of this empire. Angkor Wat is recognized and put under the World Heritage Site Protection by UNESCO and recently an enormous ancient city was discovered beneath the land of Angkor by the archaeologists and more likely to be the remain of the city around Angkor that was mysteriously disappeared. However, throughout the year, even if it still stands strong, many parts have fallen off as a result of time, weather and the war that was raging across Cambodia in the mid-1970s. Though after the civil war ended, various restoration programs have put into the action by the authority and as in February 2021, after the authority has been restoring and threatening the temple structure. And so far, more than 60% of the work has been completed and many tourists have visited this site, even famous people such as David Beckham, Jackie Chan and more. So now that we know why Angkor Wat is one of the most popular tourist attraction site in Cambodia, let's move on to the second point which we will talk about in what way is tourism changing. Tourism has been drastically improving in the past few decades. Many new patterns of tourism have developed and will also continue to develop in the future. And as the result of technology has advanced, people can now travel easier and further to the destination that were once considered unreachable. The nature and purpose of traveling have also evolved and as now, we can commonly see the travel packages for new forms of tourism such as dark tourism and ecotourism. And what are the trends in the global tourism industry? One way tourism is changing is through the trends in global tourism industry in terms of destinations, country of origin, or tourist dollars, both international and domestic tourism display these changing trends. The Asia-Pacific region has shown an impressive growth in tourist arrivals, from 8.2% in 1980 to 21.7% in 2010. And since 2004, Asia-Pacific have overtaken North and South America after Europe. It is the second most visited region in the world. And in the future, World Tourism Organization or UNWTO believes that all regions will receive more tourists. However, the Asia-Pacific region will continue to be the fastest growing region for international tourism. Before 1980s, the majority of the tourist destinations were situated in developed regions. By the 2010s, North and South America as well as the Europe were still among the main tourist receiving regions. These regions received 61% of all international tourist arrival in 2012. However, this was a decrease from 81% in 1980, which goes to show that the diversity has increased. People are more interested in other areas. And as we can see in the graph, 
It shows that the changing trend in the international tourism. Since 1980s, international tourism has become increasingly more popular and diverse in terms of its origin and its destinations. Asia Pacific is one of the major trends as its popularity has drastically gone up as the great tourist destination. And now we will take a look at the last point in this part, which talk about the tourist origins and its destinations. Throughout the world, the origins and destination of tourists are unevenly distributed. And more than half of the international tourists still originated from world's most developed countries in Europe and North America. Nevertheless, they are increasingly more in international tourists from rapidly developing countries in Asia Pacific and South America. These countries include China, India, Brazil, and more. North America generates a tourist flow of over 10 million people and to and from Central America, South America, and Europe, while Japan generates tourist flows of 5 to 10 million people to North America, Southeast Asia, and Europe in 2010. And that's for my part. For the next part, I would love to invite my other teammates to briefly talk about that point. Now it's my part two to talk about domestic tourism. What is domestic tourism? Domestic tourism refers to tourism within a tourist own country. It has gone along with international tourism. In fact, domestic tourism was and continues to be the most popular form of tourism. Example, worldwide 20 and 10. It is represent of all tourist arrivals were domestic tourism. 69% of all overnight stays in hotel were represented by domestic tourism. In Philippines 20 and 10, international tourism received were 3.2 billion US dollar. Domestic tourism received were 22.9 billion US dollar. 53 percent of domestic travelers travel for holiday. 36 percent visit relative or family. Geographical skill three. Calculating percentage change. The top bar below showed that China was one of the main source of tourist arrival in Thailand 2011 and 2012. Use the following steps to calculate the percentage change in the number of tourism China to Thailand between 2011 and 2012. 1. Calculate the difference in the number of the tourists from China between two periods. 2. Divide this difference by the original base number of tourists on 2011 and multiply it by 100. 3. Round of percentage change to 62%. This means that there were 62 more tourists from China between 2011 and 2012. 4. Repeat step 1 to 3 for all the remaining countries listed in the table. Now my part is finished and then we go into the next part which present by Arundhati. Hello teacher and hello everybody. My name is Lee Arundhat and I'm going to talk about the next part which is part 3. It is about the evolution of mass tourism to niche tourism. Tourism has evolved into several forms since the 1950s as a result of its growth. Airplanes, buses and ships, for example, can now move considerably faster while carrying more passengers resulting in mass tourism and long-haul destination. In addition to improvements in transportation networks, rising money has vast development for niche tourism, which focus on activities that are not often seen in mass tourists. As a result, tourism has taken on several forms. This form of tourism are mass tourism, package holiday, niche tourism, Ecotourism. The various type of tourism can also be divided according to their distance. These are the following. They are short haul destination and long haul destination. So, what is mass tourism? The phrase mass tourism refers to travel that involves a high number of people visiting the same location at the same time. It often resembles the form of a package holiday. Affluence and leisure time are two variables that contribute to mass tourism. Mass tourism beach holidays have always been the bread and butter 
of travel agents. High Street travel agents have been filled with holiday advertisements featuring photo after photo of stunning beaches and swimming pools up until now. Many beach locations have become overdeveloped as a result of their popularity. Although they can be found all throughout the world, they are most typically seen in Western Europe. The most usually associated with mass tourism are those overdeveloped beach locations. Example of mass tourism beach destinations Benidorm, Spain, Phuket, Thailand, and Kuta, Bali. So, the next point is package holidays. What is package holidays? I think all of you have already experienced package holidays, whether with your friends or your families. Package holidays have been a major part of tourism since the 1970s. These vacations typically feature a tour plan by a travel agent that includes transportation, accommodation, and the majority of meals. The service of guys who speak the local language was included in the package holidays. The guys are usually well enough on the sites, customs, cultures, and history of the destination. Added additional costs, more sightseeing options may be added in the package. By looking at this picture, I won't believe you if you told me that you never experienced package holidays. So let's move on to the next tourism. It is niche tourism. Niche tourism refers to travel focused on a certain area, activities, or interests. It may be done by independent travelers or in combination with a tour package. Travelers that want to try new places, activities, and experiences will like niche tourism. Here is an example of niche tourism. Welcome to Winchester Mystery House. In addition to being able to tour the Winchester Mystery House, the Spooking Estate has also opened its door to brave people for sleepovers, rumored to be haunted. You could have had a hard time sleeping in this house. Whether or not you experience paranormal spirit in this haunted mansion, you can count on the Winchester Mystery House. This will be a fantastic spot to visit for Halloween or on a day with a bunch of friends, as any who make it through the night will definitely have an interesting story to share. The next tourism is ecotourism. The word ecotourism refers to the type of niche tourism. Ecotourism is defined by the International Ecotourism Society TIES, as responsible travel to natural areas that protect the environment while also improving the well-being of local people. Six ecotourism principles were also outlined in the TIES. These principles are first, minimize impact, second, build environmental and cultural awareness and respect, third, provide positive experiences for both visitors and hosts, four, provide direct financial benefits for conversation, fifth, provide financial benefits and empowerment for local people. Last but not least, the sixth principle raised sensitivity to host countries' political, environmental, and social climate. Ecotourism includes visiting natural places that have been substantially untouched. The goal is to have visitors experience natural beauty and wildlife more deeply. It also has other goals, such as raising funding for environmental protection, allowing tourists to directly help local people and encouraging respect for different cultures and lifestyle. The White Tomo Caves in New Zealand are indeed an example of ecotourism. Because of the glow warm that brightened the cave sailing, the caves are a popular tourist attraction. It is also recognized as a good example of responsible ecotourism. Now move on to the next point, it is short haul destination. Tourists 
can choose to travel to either short haul or long haul destination. Short haul destination are those that are only a short distance from the tourist home country and are generally accessible by car, bus, train, or a flight of less than 5 hours. Hong Kong, for example, is a short haul destination from Singapore. This is due to the fact that the flight time from Singapore to Hong Kong is only about 4 hours. The next is long haul destination. Long haul location are those which are a long distance from the tourist home country and can only be reached by flying for 5 hours or more. Europe, for example, will be a long haul flight from Singapore. This is due to the fact that the flight time between Singapore and Europe is approximately 12 to 15 hours. Now let's give a floor to my next team member to present their point. Hello teacher and hello classmates. My name is Lam Siti Sat and it's my pleasure to have a speech on this part. What influence tourism trends? Tourism trends can be influenced by many different factors. To understand these factors, you have to think about a holiday that you wish to take. A person might give reasons such as travel expense, travel budget, travel time, or the type of attractions found in a destination. A person may also cite reasons such as cleanliness and security of the place. When tourists in a large number make decisions based on these factors, the decision they make can cause tourism in an area to grow, to stagnate, or to decline. And these are the reasons for the growth of the global tourism. As we know, millions of people travel each year, and the reason for the growth of global tourism are include developments in technology, demand factors, and the destination factors. Now, I'm going to give you a brief of the developments in technology. First of all, do you know the definition of technology? Technology is the application of scientific knowledge to develop machines, equipment, and way of doing things. Developments in technology, especially those in transport and computer-related technology, have changed the scope and the ease of global tourism. The developments in technology provides us the better and affordable in transport. Developments in technology have led us to a great improvement in safety, shorter traveling time, and lower traveling cost for an average person and it also becomes more affordable for us. The commercial air travel has revolutionized the global tourism when it's ongoing of technological developments in jet aircraft. Most commercial airplanes would fly in only a short distance and stop to refuel, sometimes overnight. A commercial flight from Singapore to London would take about two to four days with many stopovers at different cities. And in this present, airplanes can fly with non-stop for 15,000 kilometers and take the travel at 800 to 1,000 kilometers per hour. A commercial flight from Singapore to London now only takes around 14 hours. For example, the Havilland Comet 1. They took their first flight in July 1949. They can stock 36 passengers and their maximum speed was about 810 km per hour. Another one in present was Airbus A380. Their first flight was on April 2005. Their capacity of the passenger was 853 passengers and their maximum speed was 1000 and 90 km per hour. Like I mentioned at a moment ago, the development in technology also provides us the lower in traveling cost. The rise of budget airline has made air transport affordable. Budget airlines or airlines with low fares have rapidly expanded with Europe and South Africa and also Southeast Asia since 1980s. Such airlines are cheaper than major commercial airlines because they are smaller and more fuel-efficient aircraft. In addition, the rise in the number of budget airlines has helped 
increased the number of international travelers for some reasons, like it has enabled more people to travel internationally and more frequently. It has given travelers the opportunity to go on holidays farther away from home, and it has also enabled travelers to go to the destinations not covered by the major commercial airlines. Apart from the better and affordable transport, the increased number of air roads and agreements have made various parts of the world more accessible. A few key agreements and policies also helped tourist number increased, and the factors that helped number of tourists increase are open skies agreement and the regulation. The Open Skies Agreement is a key factor that helped budget airline success and helped boost the tourist numbers. What is an Open Skies Agreement? An Open Skies Agreement is an agreement that made between governments to remove restrictions on commercial flights between their respective countries. This means that the commercial airline can freely decide the roads, capacity, and the price of their flight without inference from the government. Its purpose is to create a free market environment for commercial airlines to compete in. Another key factor that has increased the tourist numbers is the deregulation of airline industry. What is deregulation? Deregulation means allowing fares to rise and fall according to the market demand, and also according to the competition between various airline companies. Outcomes of Open Skies Agreements Open Skies Agreements have helped the growth of aircraft roads and flights. The agreements have also played a role in increasing the number of commercial airline companies, including budget airlines. Due to the increased competition, Open Skies Agreements have also helped reduce the price of flight for passengers. Ease of access to information Developments in information technology have made information more readily available and accessible. It has also made available updated information. This is access of information has helped promote air travel and global tourism, like online booking and research, helps travelers to buy their own tickets without going to the travel agents, give tourists more option and control and also gives tourists better access in information at their destination, including place to see, social etiquette to observe, and terrain the timetables. Allows the traveler to view feedback and recommendation from the travelers. Enable travelers to do research and to find out more about the destination. For electronic checks and other safety controls research is to make tourists feel safer and confident about traveling. For the demand factors and destination factors part, I would like to give the stage to my teammate to continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Satisa. First of all, I would like to say good morning, teacher, and hello, everyone. I'm Ninita from Group 3. And I am the next presenter for the next part. Second relevant reason for the growth of global tourism is demand factors. At first, demand refers to people's willingness and ability to buy goods and services. Demand factors influence people's ability to travel and influence people's desires to purchase tourist-related goods and services. Demand factors in tourism include disposable income, leisure time, and changing lifestyle. The first factor of demand is disposable income. Disposable income is the amount of income left to an individual after taxes have been paid which are available for saving and spending. This possible income has been increasing globally because of rapid economic growth such as China and India. In this country, the number of people in the middle income and high income group have been growing and having more disposable income. Leisure time. Leisure time is the part of day, week, 
or year when people have no work commitments and becomes a time for relaxation. In many developed countries and less developed countries, since the 1950s, people in all income groups have enjoyed shorter working weeks, more public holiday, and more paid annual leave. This increased ability of leisure time has allowed more people to travel. Instead, in Australia, many employees can exchange paid overtime work for leave. This increases their chance of taking longer weekend breaks. As in Canada, there has also been an increase in additional break and extended weekends. The last factor is changing lifestyle. Changing lifestyle refers to the change in the way people live throughout their lifetime and from generation to generation. The place of life today is much faster. Many people in the workforce find themselves spending long hours at the workplace beyond the official working hours. Therefore, traveling has become a way for people to relax and taking a break from their fast-paced lifestyle at work and at home. Due to advances in medical technology and knowledge, people are now more health conscious and lead healthier lifestyles. As a result, people live longer and are more physically fit to travel frequently. Traveling, therefore, has also become a way for retirees to spend the remainder of their healthy years productively. Third main aspect of the growth of global tourism is destination factor. Destination factors refer to the infrastructure and services in tourist destinations that allow for more convenient and comfortable stays for tourists. General these factors are attraction, investment in infrastructure and services, and access to the information. With the first main point is attraction. An attraction is a factor or quality that makes a place interesting or enjoyable. The attraction is often promoted and enhanced by the tourism industry to attract even more tourists. Some attractions are natural while others are built. Places of scenic beauty are examples of natural attractions. On the other hand, medical services, educational facility, and the theme parks are examples of built attractions. Without these built attractions, tourists are less likely to visit a place. Likewise, governments, tourist authorities, and tourism businesses know the value of investing in attractions. Such attractions can offer something spectacular, unique, and interesting for both domestic and international tourists. They also hope that tourists will return repeatedly to spend their tourist dollars. Here comes the end of my presentation. So now I would like to give the floor to the next member of my group, Pain Retina. Thank you, teacher and everyone. So part five, I'm going to talk about why is tourism subject to regional fluctuations. Regional fluctuations refer to rapid changes in a region's situations or conditions. Such fluctuations are often caused by events that affect tourist destination both within and outside the countries they occur in. These events include disasters, regionals and global recessions, unfavorable 
political situations and the last one is outbreaks of disease first disaster disasters are events that cause great damage to properties leads to injuries or cause great loss of life disasters can discourage tourists from visiting a destinations because of their life their lives and safety may be at risk and essential tourist infrastructures and service may be disrupts and the place lost its appeal. Disasters can also discourage the citizens of the affected countries from traveling. South Korea, for example, receives a third of its tourists from Japan, the country's main source of visitors. However, the Tohoku earthquake in 2011 resulted in a 12% decrease in Japanese tourists, according to the Korea Tourism Organizations. In March 2011, northern Japan experienced its most severe earthquake recorded, which caused a tsunami and nuclear meltdown in the country's Tohoku region. As a result, International tourist arrival fall sharply in the month following the earthquake. Prior to this, tourist arrivals had already experienced a decline from January to February 2011. By the end of the 2011, Japan total tourist arrivals had decreased by 28% to 6.2 million arrivals. A year after the disasters, Japan authorities confidently pointed to a recovery with international tourist arrival almost equal to the 2009 figure. So moving on to the next point, regionals and global recessions. A recession is a period of general slowdowns in economic activities. Many people may be left jobless and without income. When there is no income, people cut back on spending. This leads to less demand for goods and services, so less people are likely to travel. Recessions can be caused by a variety of factors. These include high price raise in products and services, problems in the financial markets, and declines in exports. A recession can be regional or global. A recession is regional when it affects only uh, regions or groups of countries. For example, European stock crisis. In 2010, Greece was unable to repay government debts, followed by Ireland, Portugal, and Spain. The economy was not growing, so the euros weakened. This affected other countries that used the euros as their currency as well. This leads to collapse of financial institutions, business, and massive unemployment. A recession is global when it affects many countries around the world. For example, global financial crisis. The crisis began in 2007 and 2008 when some of the world's top financial corporations declared bankruptcies. These companies went bankrupt after losing a major portion of their investments in the US housing market meltdown. Most financial institutions throughout the world experienced panics as a result of the housing market collapse. It impacted several countries throughout the world, leading their economies to slow down or strain. Thank you, Regina, for your presentation on the issues of the tourism. Now, let's get back to my parts. Good morning, teacher and all classmates. My name is Mont Blood. Today, I'm going to represent my two factors and main key factors that lead to the decline of tourism. The first one is unfavorable political situations. As we know, when 
an unfavorable political situation occurs, the tourism sector just declines sharply and rapidly. So, what is an unfavorable political situation, and how does it affect the tourism factors? The term unfavorable political situation refers to conflict in a country, such as between political parties, disagreement between different groups of people that may result in wars. This conflict situation leads to the damage of infrastructure, tourist safety, and even death. As a consequence, in February 2011, the Arab Spring uprising took place in Egypt, causing tourist arrivals to decline from 14.7 million to 9.8 million tourists. The way to build their reputation when experiencing political unfavorable situation is through promotion, new infrastructures, and tourist conditions, and also safety insurance. The next part is outbreaks of diseases. An outbreak is a big impact on tourism as well. So what is an outbreak of diseases and how does it affect the tourism sector? An outbreak of disease refers to the sudden and widespread occurrence of disease in an area. For example, a SARS outbreak spread over six months in 2003, killing 775 people and infecting more than 80,000 people in 25 countries. But the worst and worst and the most obvious issues we have been experiencing now is the COVID-19 outbreak. 410 million cases have been already reported. I mean, 410 million people have been infected with the virus in just nearly three years since in 2019. We see a lot of practical problems in the tourism sector, such as the closure of the border, traveling ban in almost every country, making the tourist numbers fall sharply and sharply. It falls rapidly, really, really rapidly. So now, here comes to the end of our presentation. Thank you for spending your valuable time watching our presentation video. If you have any questions, don't feel afraid and feel free to ask. We will try to answer your precious questions as much as possible we can. Thank you again and have a nice day.